Good morning, Interweb World Builders Log 27. Although I guess it's probably like a 26.5. This is a sort of addendum to the previous video on um, seafloor topography. Recall that I had said ocean depth is extremely hard to compute. And also recall that I had said that ocean depth varies as a function of oceanic crust age. So the older the ocean crust, the deeper the ocean. The younger the crust, the more shallow the ocean. And it like literally only just dawned on me in editing the previous video to think to myself, wait a minute, is there some sort of like formula that describes that relationship? Because I've never tried to compute ocean depth coming at it from the angle of oceanic crust age. So to Wikipedia, I went and I stumbled across seafloor depth versus age, very aptly titled page. The excitement in the room was now palpable. Did they have a bunch of maths listed? Turns out they did indeed have a bunch of maths listed that describes this relationship between oceanic crust age and seafloor depth. I went to the citations, looked at the papers they had cited, and then graphed the models that they had, namely this chap here for young crust and this chap here for old crust. And the graphs turned out to look like this. And what you're looking at here is the x-axis is time in millions of years. The y-axis is seafloor depth in meters. The red curve here is what the model predicts in the papers. It basically means the sea floor. The blue line here lying on the x-axis, just to make things a little bit clearer, is sea level. So what this says is that new crust, crust that is zero million years old, it is currently being created. Necessarily then, it exists exclusively at mid-ocean ridges. Mid-ocean ridges are the birthplace of new oceanic crust. Mid-ocean ridges are like underwater mountain chains. Therefore, that crust is more elevated than the surrounding ocean floor. And in this instance, crust that is zero million years old would be about 2,500 meters below sea level. And we compare that to say crust that is 50 million years old, it would be just shy of 5,000 meters below sea level because as the crust ages, it subsides. And the cool thing is, and something that I hadn't appreciated, this subsistence asymptotically approaches about 6,400 meters. It doesn't just keep subsiding and subsiding and subsiding. It kind of levels out at about 6,400 meters, which is cool. So that looked neat, the maths didn't look too hard, so I went and popped it into the Worldsmith. So that means there is a new version of the Worldsmith out, version 5.0. If you go to the tectonics page and scroll down, you'll find the new section here called Oceans, Ocean Depth Calculator. All you gotta do to use it is input the average height of your mid-ocean ridge. Important to note here that 2,600, for instance in this case, means 2,600 meters below sea level. Essentially what you're telling the calculator is, what is my initial height? And then it computes the rest of the curve. And then it auto populates this big old table here with the crustal age in millions of years and the ocean depth. And if you've been following along with the whole G-plates thing and you've done your own G-plates project, this is now super useful information to know. So for example, if we pop back into G-plates and turn on our ocean crust layer, we know that any red sections of ocean, like this one, for example, indicate ocean crust that is between zero million years old, i.e. crust at the mid-ocean ridge, and 50 million years old. So if we assume these values for a second, we know that at the mid-ocean ridge, the crust is 2,600 meters deep, as in the ocean depth is 2,600 meters, and at 50 million years, it's 5,000 meters. 2,600 along here, 5,000 along here. The orange section is between 50 and 100 million years, the yellow sections are between 100 and 150, etc. each going in chunks of 50 million years, which is just awesome. So that means that we are able to calculate ocean depth really simply, given what we know from G-plates. Now, at this point, you might be asking, well, what sort of figures can we put in here? In the little notes section here, I said that 2,600 plus or minus 500 is probably a decent range. I am getting this from the Encyclopedia Britannica, I know I'm quoting Encyclopedia, but we're not doing science here, we're doing world building. And they say, oceanic ridges are found in every ocean basin and appear to girdle Earth. The important bit, the ridges rise from depths near 5 kilometers to an essentially uniform depth of about 2.6 kilometers or 1.6 miles. So what I'm going to do for this project and future projects is just basically assume that all mid-ocean ridges on a given planet are 2.6k or lie at 2.6 kilometers below sea level. So I have one set of numbers basically that I can apply to this heat map. Makes life very easy. 
and given the variance in size between similarly coloured zones here, it won't lead to a sort of homogenous outcome, which I think is pretty cool. And I have started doing this. So here's my world, Kretak, placeholder name, it'll change at some stage. As we left it in the last video where I was just kind of going by feel and eyeballing the um, ocean topography. And here is what it currently looks like. Still a work in progress. Check out, I've completed these two oceans here. So this ocean here, the one between Esri and Degra, I've completed. And the one, the Degra ocean between Degra and uh, Picard here, I've also completed. So compare the difference. This was going on fields. This is going on the mats. Fields. Mats. Fields. Mats. Which I really enjoy. So now if someone comes along and says, well, why is there this big ocean deep here, this massive basin? I can say, well, if we look at the age of the ocean crust, we'll see here that this ocean crust is quite old. So it has subsided, ocean deep, etc. I am buzzed about this. I realize it's it's a, like a super subtle difference, like it's not that big a deal, but I love this. All future projects, I'm doing this. Once again, I'm not going to subjugate you to endless time lapses of me doing the oceans. I'll do it all off air. And FYI, actually, I do a lot of this topography work on Patreon only live streams. So if you're interested in seeing, I guess, more of the process, the more mundane stuff, um, you should check out that. But regardless, next episode, a completed ocean map will be presented and then we can move on with the next step. All right, that's it. Go check out the calculator. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Oh, and one more thing before I go to all the beautiful, wonderful, awesome people who emailed me about my blender woes. Y'all are just great. I, I can't name drop you all because there's so many emails, but I am beginning to understand things a little bit better. So this is the current state of my like false relief little map way, way better. I'm now watching, I think it's Blender Guru, the donut guy. I'm sure everyone's aware of the meme. I'm watching his series at the moment so I, I, I can figure out how to do lighting correctly, how to put in a backdrop, and then I'm gonna try and spin this boyo. I'm gonna make a little video and it'll be all class. Okay, addendum done. As always, thanks a million for watching and thanks a million for supporting this series. It means so, so much. Have a great one and until next time, Edgar out.